Hey guys, in this tutorial, we will be doing the Arnold custom shaders for the pyro. I cleaned up the scene a bit, colored the notes that needed to be rendered later on. By coloring, you can just press C and just choose the color while you select the node. For this tutorial, I actually brought in my original pyro explosion and my original destruction the one that I've tweaked completely and meticulously because if I use the one that I used that I tweaked from the previous tutorial the pyro shaders aren't going to look as good because obviously 30 to 40 minutes of tweaking a pyro sim and a destruction sim is nowhere nearly enough so in order for me to do a proper shader tutorial i need a proper pyro sim so let's get started first what we want to do is put down a material node and put the viewer on it so it'll look like this when you've cached out the vdb from the last lesson this is perfectly normal it's not broken or anything this is happening because all of the attributes you cached out are stacking on top of each other so if you see your file cache These four VDB attributes are actually stacking on top of each other. So what I did to separate them is put down a volume visualization node and isolate the fields. So as you can see, density and diffuse field for the smoke is density. And the emission is also density so you can visualize your cached VDB this way without all of the other attributes stacking on top of it first what we want to do is create a shop net Name this shaders. Put down an Arnold shader network. Name this pyro. Once you're inside, put down a standard volume. Click this to expand. Plug volume into volume. Now, what we're going to do here is customize the emission and emission color but first let's put this shader on our pyro go to the arnold tab expand the obj and put in your pyro shader Go inside, go to your material node, put in the same thing as well. Now put down a ROP net. Set 
since we are rendering with Arnold, Arnold is going to be our main renderer, so put down Arnold. Okay, so now we are going to set up a basic light just so we can get the feeling of the environment shining on our pyro. Put down an Arnold light. Look through light. Lock it. For this one, we will be changing our light to an HDRI. So go to the light tab, light type, and change it to Sky Dome. Color type should be texture. Okay, maybe we shouldn't have transformed it, so just put it back. Go to here, color texture. Choose your HDRI. Turn up the exposure a bit. Go to your render view. Select your main camera. Hit render. As you guys can see, the HDRI is showing, so pause this. Go to contribution, turn off the camera, re-render. As you guys can see, the spaceship is pink, which means there are no materials assigned to it yet. So let's just quickly assign a basic standard surface on it. For the spaceship, I actually passed it to the compositing side. I didn't do the shader or the lighting for the spaceship destruction because the compositing side did some extra stuff with the shaders and the lighting and made it look nice. So for that, I'm just gonna assign a basic white color since I didn't do the shaders anyway.
Okay, so you guys can see the ambient from the HDRI. So that's all set up. Now we are going to go back to the pyro. Before I touch any of these parameters, I want to isolate. So I'm only looking at the pyro when I render. So I'm going to shift, left click, and drag it to exit out of this you can shift click outside so let me just do this and if you guys see there are a couple different tabs here you can change this but I'll leave it as, as it is for the emission you can switch between either black body or channel which is the ones I usually use, but I'm going to stick to black body for this tutorial. I'm going to change this though to density. So type in that. I'm actually going to turn this up to get more of the color through. For the scatter color going to change it to a base of red and as for the density I am going to turn it up a bit so I'll just put 5 let's see first As you guys can see, it's way too bright, so I'll turn down these three attributes. Now it's a bit too dark but you guys can see the red coming through so what I'm going to do is turn up the temperature scale. For a base, that's okay, and I'm not going to be touching the emission or emission color because these two are the things that we are going to custom tweak. So I'll show you guys how to build the setup right now. Okay, so first put down a volume sample float. With this node, we are going to use the channel which we are going to bring in for the emission and emission color i used heat but of course you guys can use temperature or density you can experiment with it let me just go to a frame where it's brighter so let's say 35 okay next Put down a ramp RGB. Plug the float into the first input and we are going to change the colors to red, green and blue. So
put green and blue okay so with this we are going to separate it into three different channels red green and blue next put down a range plug the rgb into the input Now notice how this has red, green, and blue. So with these, we are going to separate the pyro details, these three in outputs. So put down a ramp float. Plug the red into the input. Copy paste. Plug the green into the second one and plug the blue into the third one. With these, we have separated the three red, green, and blue channels. And now we want to colorize them, so put down a ramp RGB. Now that's settled, we want to put in what we call a layer RGBA. We need two of them, so let's do that. What this does is essentially, if you guys ever used Nuke or Photoshop, it has these different layering options. Multiply, over, overlay, out, different color dodge, and etc. We are going to be experimenting with them. So for the first layer RGBA, we want to plug in the ramp floats into them. So. Put ramp float 1 into the first input, second to the second input, third into the third input. And for the RGBA output, we want to connect it to the emission. Now for the second one, we want to plug in the ramps, so RGB first input, second input, and third input. Plug the output RGBA into emission color and this is your custom shader setup. So let's see. Now it's very very dark so I actually customized the ramps Go to the range. Tweak the values a bit. Now go to the ramp float and tweak the ramps. Two. I tweaked it something like this.
Okay, now we are going to tweak the colors. Put pastel light colors in the first one. Put darker colors in the second one. And put even darker red in the third one. Change the layer types I put this to plus third one also to plus and for the second layer I put it to overly plus and plus we render it's really dark, so we are going to tweak from there. And before I forget, just put a lot in, which is, I already preloaded it, but you guys can put a lot in through this and turn this to 1 what it does is it standardized the pyro shaders which is very very dark right now so let's turn
Now it's way too yellow, so we are going to bring down the yellow. And maybe put in some lights to help. Give the light a bit of blue. Maybe switch this. still very yellow so let's pull this down
let's see if the other frames have more pink in it so take a snapshot of that go to the other frames render okay so it does have pink and purple but it's not enough so let's go here turn this way up starting to look nice with that mystical feel Time to check the other frame, so go further, render. So the problem with this is the frames all the way to the end are very bright, whereas the reference, it dissipates quickly. So what I'm gonna do is a little trick since, as you guys know, almost everything in Houdini can be keyframed. So I'm going to do just that. And actually keyframe the brightness the temperature scale and the black body Kelvin so what I'm gonna do is go maybe 40 keyframe these go to 65 keyframe it way down Okay, it's way too little, so turn it back up. Go even further. Okay, so it's not bright at the end. In the beginning, it still has its heat. Yeah, so up to frame 40, it will be very hot and the rest of the frames, it will gradually cool down because we manually keyframe the shaders but this is not enough pink, it's very bright if you can see the detail level, we need to pull down the blue more maybe Or we can turn up the pink, which is another good option.
Okay, it's too pink, so turn it down. Okay, maybe get a softer pink because it's a bit too harsh. It's a bit too bright, so turn it down. Turn up the density. see the other frames okay it's not bright enough here so we are going to keyframe the heat up I think the pyro is too soft, in my opinion. So, I'm gonna go to my pyro visualization under the Arnold tab, go to shapes, VDB, turn this down. It's originally an automatic because the pyro was too round and too shape it's not soft enough in the render so what you guys can do is switch this to custom which i did earlier and i forgot to show and increase this but be careful the more you increase this the more blurred out the details are gonna be turn the step scale down it was originally one but i turned it up this was originally way lower too so it should look better now okay the details look better 
there are a variety of pretty colors so for one final check let's go to the other frames I think it's a bit too thin, so turn up the density. Okay, I think for now the shaders roughly look fine. With a bit more tweaking it'll be fantastic so you guys can go ahead and do that with the ways i just show you in the next lesson i'll be showing you guys how to put in the lights to define the pyro a bit more so it's lit in every angle and i'll also be showing how to set up aovs in the lights for your render and of course i'll teach you guys about the render settings 